how to make perfect loops in Maya. My name is Nick Mabry, your 3D coach. So here's our old friend, the juice box rig, up to his old shenanigans. He's already kind of looping, but we're gonna check it out in the graph editor and see if our eyes are lying to us. So stop the animation, go over to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and just like before, when we drag this window, if we drag it slowly down, we'll get that little bar, let go, and now it's docked. Minimize it so we can see our boy a little better, a little juice boy. All right, so zooming out, we're gonna see our curves. You can see they're still nice and smooth, and when we play it back, we are getting a loop, but we don't know that it's perfect yet. And the reason why is that we can assume that this curve here really does match up with this curve over here, right? And these, gonna, these are gonna play beautifully together, but we don't know because we can't see these curves continuing. Let's fix that. Stop my playback, select everything, and over here in curves, our top two selections are called pre-infinity and post-infinity. And we have all these crazy options right beside it. Well, the infinity refers to these areas of the graph editor. This is the infinity part of it. It's very dramatic. And pre-infinity is left, or what happens before, and post-infinity is what happens after our animation. So after this line here. So with everything selected, if I zoom out and select everything, we can go to curves, pre-infinity, and we're gonna cycle it because we want a cycle, we want a loop. With everything still selected, we can go to curves, post infinity, cycle. There are also these handy little buttons here. So this is pre-infinity cycle, and this is post infinity cycle. Now when I pressed those, they actually popped up, which was unexpected for me, because usually you have to go into the view menu and click on infinity and make sure that it's checkmarked, otherwise, it'll hide it. It'll still be there and it's still cycling, but you won't be able to see it. So you're not gonna be able to know that that information is there. So just turn infinity on in your view menu. So now let's check it out. Much like we did when we were smoothing these curves, we can go curve to curve and make sure they're smoothing in that infinity space. I'll start with the base, check that out. Yep, looks pretty smooth to me. Check out that middle one, zoom out. And I'm seeing a little issue in the X there. Although the Translate Z looks fine. So I'll click on Rotate X. And I think we could probably smooth that out more. I feel like it wants to overshoot a bit. You know what I mean? Here's how you move keyframes in the graph editor. Select a keyframe, press W for your move tool, and then just click and hold that middle mouse button. Now you're moving them. If you want to lock it to just one axis, right? You want to move it up and down, but you don't want to move it left and right. Just hold shift and then middle mouse click and you'll get that weird icon again. Drag up and down. And you'll notice you can't do left and right. If you hold shift and middle mouse and then go right to left, you'll notice that you're locked to right and left and now you can't go up and down. I prefer to hold shift and just go up and down and that way I'm not moving them left to right. And here's the thing, I can smooth out this keyframe here right? But the problem is that I have two keyframes. I have this keyframe and this keyframe. So this tangent handle is flat, but over here it's kind of curved. So I want to make sure that this one matches the end one. So instead of flat, I'll just bring it down and smooth it out. On this keyframe, our tangent handles only control this side of the actual tangent. You can see that here, right? Only the right side, only this side of that tangent handle is being affected by this. So I'll undo that. And then over here on our last keyframe, this tangent handle is only affecting the left side, right? You can see that there, which is why this one and this one, their tangent handles have to be pretty much in alignment. So now we're getting more of a dip more of a smoother dip. Next control curve, let's check that out. Definitely seeing a problem there. Definitely seeing an issue there in probably rotate X. Yep. So first, let's fix those tangent handles. And remember, this is only controlling half of it. So we'll roughly get it in place. Same as here, let's roughly get it in place. And then we can kind of fix this up. Get that smooth curve going just like we did in a previous video. 
subscribers know what I'm talking about. And now we got an issue because I want to move this keyframe down to get that nice and smooth here. But you're going to see it dips off because I only moved one of them. And now I need to move this one down. But instead of doing them separately, I'll undo it with Control Z. And now I'll click and drag over that and then I'll hold Shift and box select that second one. So again, left click and drag, hold shift, left click and drag. Now I have both of them. I'll hit W for my move tool and then middle mouse click and drag down. Next curve. Straw looks pretty good, but the top of the straw, we can see some issues. We got a little bit of an ish here. We got a little bit of a bump. So I think we can cure this by moving the keyframe down and adjusting the tangent handle a bit. So let's do it. We'll select the start. We'll select the end and we can also move two tangent handles at the same time. If we select this one, shift and drag over this one, then we'll shift and drag over a tangent handle and shift and drag over another tangent handle and make sure, right? I have my right tangent handle selected here and therefore I also have the right tangent handle selected here. Now I'll middle mouse click, drag it down and you can see they're both locked, right? So here we go. Kind of line those up. And now the real problem presents itself, which is this guy. So we'll move this down. Get a little bit of this. And a little bit of this. Round that off. And I find it helpful to look at this post infinity area here because there's not big little blips in the way. You can see that that's really smooth now. So that should be looking a lot better. We'll play it back and now we know that if we export this animation for a video game or anything, it will loop perfectly. There's not going to be any pops. There's not going to be any blips. If you have an animation in a video game that's not working right now, right? The loop is just, it stutters, it lags. It's just poppy. Take it into Maya, apply pre and post infinity cycles, turn that view of infinity on and just start smoothing it out. Same as we did two weeks ago. If this video helped you, all I ask is you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Nick Mabry, your 3D coach and I'll see you next week. Oh.